Today we are going to look into the former boxing heavyweight champion Trevor Burbick. The crimes he committed that got him deported from two countries and later his murder. Let's take you into the story of Trevor Burbick. Trevor Burbick was born and raised in Jamaica, and fought as an amateur there he showed a lot of promise, as a boxer and moved to Canada in 1976, and turned professional. He won 11 straight fights as a professional before his first loss to Bernardo Mercado. Even after his loss he showed promise and proved himself climbing up further in the ranks, and becoming a contender for the title in 1981. This is where his most notable fights started to come in. On the 11th of April 1981 he went up against undefeated WBC world champion Larry Holmes. He had heart and tried to keep up with Holmes, but was completely outboxed. He did manage to stay on his feet, and not be knocked down and took it through to points it went to a unanimous decision, which Holmes easily won. In his next fight after the loss to Holmes was against a nearly 39-year-old Muhammad Ali. Ali was not the same fighter he used to be showing signs of age and decreasing health just like Ali's last fight against Holmes a year before. This time though Muhammad Ali hung on in there and gave Burbick a fight. He lasted the full 10 rounds, and Burbick won on unanimous decision. This turned out to be Ali's last fight, and the huge amount of Ali fans didn't hold Burbick in high regards. Burbick kept fighting, and had now moved to America having Don King as his manager. He kept moving up towards a title, shot winning, and losing fights along the way until he got another title shot in March 1986 beating Pinklon Thomas in a unanimous decision for the WBC heavyweight title. Burbick's first title defense was in November 1986 against 20-year-old Mike Tyson. This would be the fight of his life with Tyson's speed, power, and ferociousness he stood next to no chance and I think he knew it. Tyson had climbed his way brutally knocking nearly every one of his opponents out in early rounds. Just as everyone thought Tyson dominated the fight and Burbick was no match for Tyson. Instead of trying to use his jab and reach, he tried to have a punch up with Tyson, and it proved to be a big mistake for Burbick. Tyson knocked Burbick out early in the second round, becoming the youngest heavyweight champion ever. What was next for Burbick in his life and career? Burbick carried on boxing, but never got anywhere near a world title shot again. He was known for his feuds with Larry Holmes outside of the ring, and they once had a street brawl, only ending when the police got involved and split it up. Burbick retired in the year 2000 he was 45 years old. Please keep watching this is where the good bits start, and we find out exactly what happens with Trevor Burbick, and the crimes he committed the deportation, and his murder. If you're liking this video, don't forget to give it a like. Trevor Burbick was no stranger to the law he had been arrested several times in his life. He was found guilty in 1992 of raping the 26-year-old family babysitter who had only been working with the Burbick family for just over two weeks. Burbick raped her in her bedroom, in her Miami apartment on the 31st of October 1990. He was sentenced to five years in prison, but only served 15 months of his sentence. It didn't stop there as in 1997 he violated his parole, and landed himself in more trouble. After his release from prison in the United States he was deported to Canada, and ordered not to enter the United States, Canada being where he resided before America but now he was caught illegally entering the states he was kept in a deportation center for two years, and then sent back to Jamaica in 1999. Canada wouldn't allow him to reside there either and removed his immigration status, they had tried to have him removed once before after he was ordered to go to Canada, after his release from prison. However later in 1999 he won the right to be allowed back to live in Canada. Burbick went to reside in Jamaica in 2002, and had several run-ins with the law in between this time. Trevor Burbick's life came to a tragic end on October 28, 2006. At the time involved in a land dispute with his nephew, Burbick's body was found in a church courtyard. 
Chop wounds to the head gave police a clear indication that this was a homicide and his 20-year-old nephew Harold Burbick and 18-year-old Kenton Gordon were picked up the next day. Harold Burbick would be convicted of the murder and given a life sentence, while Gordon was found guilty of manslaughter and sentenced to 14 years in prison. The Jamaica Observer later reported that Burbick had been bludgeoned to death with a four-foot-long metallic pipe and a crowbar. Despite his legal troubles in America and Jamaica he was still classed as a national legendary hero in his native Dr. Maker.